So I've been trying to do a daily ice bath for the past two months now, and I would say the most annoying part about this, besides the cold water, is having to figure out the ice situation. Now, if you don't know, ice is expensive. So instead, I've been filling these plastic containers up with ice, putting them in the freezer, and then using them the next day. And it works, but it gets kind of annoying. But other than the little bit of annoyance, um, I recently was asked by one of my friends how cold I'm doing my ice baths. And to be honest, I had no idea. I just knew it was painful. So I decided to buy a thermometer and test it out. And to my disappointment, this is sitting at about 60 degrees. So instead of having to buy ice and dealing with the temperature that David Goggins might call a sauna, I'm going to build a DIY water chiller. I have a general idea of how to do this. I'm not sure if it'll work, but let's find out. All right, so I went to the store and picked up a few things. First thing is the submergible water pump. I have some nylon or plastic tubing, and finally some copper tubing here. So let's talk about what the plan is. Now, this is what I'm going to use to actually cool the water down. This is a 12 volt car fridge. So the initial plan was to use the water pump to pump the water into the fridge, cool it off, and then pump it back into the ice plunge. But then I thought about it, and then if you wanted to do that, you'd need two pumps running at the same time. They'd have to be exactly at the same rate, otherwise this is going to overfill or just run dry. And rather than deal with all that and the timing and whatnot, I've decided to change up the design. So instead, that's where the copper pipe comes in. So I'm still gonna fill this up with water. I'm gonna run the copper pipe within it and use it like a heat sink. So pump the water into the copper tubing sitting in this refrigerator filled with water, and hopefully that'll be cold enough to cool it down and send it back into the ice plunge. But that's the general theory at least, so let's start putting some things together. The first thing I wanna do is figure out how to orient the copper tubing inside the refrigerator. Now I could just leave it coiled up like this, but I think we'll get better heat transfer if I'm able to separate the coil and actually just run it back and forth through here to space out the tubing. So I think that's what I'm gonna do here. Okay, I'm trying my best to keep this radius as tight as possible while not kinking the line here. I figured I could just do it by hand. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to kind of work. Okay, so there we go. This is my heatsink coil, or the best I could come up with. And let's just make sure that everything fits in here. Yeah, so connect the plastic tubing to the copper tubing, connect the pump up to it, fill this with water, turn it on, and we're pretty much good to go. So the pump came with a couple of different nozzles here, and I'm thinking that this smaller one is going to fit on the hose a little bit better. So I might need to heat this up a little bit to get this, to get this malleable enough to get this on here. I mean, it's not seated all the way on, but it's, I mean, mostly on. I'll put a little zip tie on here just to be sure, but I think it should be okay. Okay, I don't think the zip ties are making a good seal around the tubing here, so I'm just going to use some electrical tape to wrap around and hopefully that'll offer enough of a seal so that water doesn't leak in and out of the system here because we don't want water getting introduced into the fridge. Um, that way it won't you know, overflow and spill or potentially ruin something if we overfill it. So I'm just gonna wrap this really tightly with some electrical tape on both ends and hopefully that should be good enough to keep the water out for now.
And that pretty much does it for the setup of the ice bath chiller. So we have the pump here in the ice bath. It has this tube that goes all the way up to this coil into the fridge. So hopefully it'll cool it down. I just put a little ice pack here to help pre-cool it for now. But this is set to 35 and hopefully it'll get down to that. And then it spits it out over here into this tube back into the ice bath, as you can see here. So if you notice, the flow rate is very, very slow. And I did that on purpose. I want to give the refrigerator a chance to actually cool the water down as it's traveling through these tubes so it's not moving too quickly. So I hope, at least in theory, that's what's gonna happen. But for now, let's go ahead and close this up. Now, if I close this, you'll notice there is still a gap here in the refrigerator because of the tube, obviously. But what I'm gonna do is just put a piece of microfiber cloth here for now until I can get some sort of gasket and seal it up that way. So I moved the ice bath into the shade for now because we are sitting at about 72 degrees, which is pretty warm. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. We'll come back every hour or so and keep checking the temperature and hopefully it'll bring it down. But I'm not expecting anytime soon. It's probably gonna take a while, especially with that little pump. Okay, it's been about an hour now and I have the cover on the ice bath and I wanna see if there's been any change to the temperature. So we'll go ahead and grab this thermometer and it looks like, oh man, maybe maybe half a degree, if that. But I mean, let's keep it in here for now and we'll keep coming back and checking on it. Okay, it is the next morning. I let this run all night. So let's go ahead and check the water temperature now. And it is 68 degrees. So that did not work at all, but I think I know why. The fridge right now itself is at about 60 degrees and I had it set to, I don't wanna drop that, had it set to about nine. Well, you know, I changed that last night because this just wasn't getting cold. I think that's because of the seal here. Of course, there is a gap here and I don't think the microfiber was making a good enough seal, of course. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this up completely and then we'll go from there to see if that helps at all. Okay, I've had the setup running for about two days now and I think I know what the problem is. So the fridge, the lowest it's able to get down to right now is about 55 degrees and I do have it set to negative four I don't know if you can see that it is set to negative four I set it there last or yesterday and it's only down to 55 degrees I think because of the heat exchange between the cold plunge and this it's drawing in too much heat into the fridge I mean other than the fact that I don't have a really good thermal seal here because of the packaging tape that's all I had um, I think I would have to seal this very well and then also probably insulate the tubing so that I don't have any heat loss from here as well. But I mean, other than that, it's working okay, I think. Let's check the temperature. Ooh, it feels a little colder. And we are at about 60 degrees or so, which isn't terrible. So before when I would check on it in the morning, it'd be about 68, 70. Um, so it has dropped it quite a bit to start off with, but still not as cold as we want. But 60 degrees with no ice in it, that's pretty good. So I just did three minutes and I just noticed something interesting. So obviously when I'm in here, I'm taking the pump out so I don't get electrocuted. Um, and then when the pump was out and it wasn't actually pumping water through this fridge, this actually dropped two more degrees. So it's sitting at 53 right now. So that just kind of further validates the fact that this is just absorbing too much heat from this or from the ice bath so that it doesn't allow this to cool down other than the fact that this isn't insulated. So I'm gonna try my best to insulate this whole system um, other than the cold plunge itself. I mean, that's a big factor as well. And we'll see how much lower we can get this. What I'm gonna do at this point is insulate the actual seam here with some foam that I bought and some uh, tube insulation or some pipe insulation as well for these. And we'll see if that makes a difference before I call this a complete failure. It is now the next day and I let the new system run here overnight. So again, we added some insulation to the piping as well as sealed up this gasket as well. I added some tape just to kind of seal this hole up really well. But right now the fridge is sitting at about 50 degrees, 51 degrees. 
And the cold plunge itself is, well, I can already feel it pretty cold here, about 51 degrees as well. So it's pretty decent. I mean, it brought it down a good 10 degrees from what it was at about 60 degrees, but there's a problem. This cold plunge is not insulated well at all. So this is this thin rubber. It's the cheapest cold plunge I could find. Again, I'm trying to save a little bit of money here. So I'm using what I have. Um, I don't think I'm going to use this system, unfortunately, even though we, I would say we were still pretty successful in bringing the cold plunge down, but it's a very inefficient system. Again, we're probably stressing this compressor out into the, in the fridge. Um, this being outdoors, I mean, you're exposed to the elements and the heat, so I don't think it's a very efficient system at all. If I were to bring this maybe inside, if I were to get a more insulative cold plunge, if I were to insulate this whole system a little better, I would feel a little bit more confident in saying that this is something viable that I would do and run the system like this, but unfortunately I don't think it is. So although I would say we were successful for a little DIY project, a pretty cool little proof of concept, I'm not gonna use the system and I'll probably go back to freezing ice. But nonetheless, this was an interesting idea. Maybe in the future I'll do another project where I actually build an insulated cold plunge and run this system and make it a little bit more efficient so it's a little bit more of a viable solution, but for now, I'm just gonna go back to my old system. Okay, that was probably the worst cold plunge I've done ever. I mean, I thought the other ones were pretty bad in the sense that, I mean, they were cold, they were kind of difficult, but I've never gotten it down to that level where this was, I mean, 50 degrees is no joke. <sighs> but until I make a more efficient cold plunge itself where I'm not running the compressor 24 seven and have risk of actually, you know, breaking the system, I think I'm gonna have to set, take this apart and really think about what I'm doing or think about the system that I wanna build before committing fully. I hope you guys enjoyed this build or at least found something useful out of it. If you guys have any suggestions on how to improve this system at all, if I should use thicker gauge copper tubing, if I should run more copper tubing or just a better fridge or whatever it is, leave it for me in the comments so I know to improve it for the next video. If you like this video, like it and subscribe to stay tuned for any future videos and as always, Thanks for watching.